I had inside of me, I want to do them now when I used to be too afraid to do them. So he's like motivating you from the other side. For sure. A lot of my, um, yeah, yes, a thousand, a thousand percent. I, um, a lot of my inspiration comes from him. Mm -hmm. So um, when you look over the arc of your career, I mean, everybody knows you from ATL. I mean, you just, just popped on the screen and, you know, and then you've done these other programs, other, other projects as well. What would you say you had to overcome within yourself to like step into the next iteration of, of Lauren? Self-doubt, um, not feeling worthy or not feeling good enough to um, have, you know, the good parts of life. I think even my, you know, in childhood, it was uh, very rough for me. And um, I was so used to struggling and I was so used to, you know, bad things happening that I kind of got in that mind frame that things were just always going to be hard and bad. And I think it had a lot, it, it really, it really, it really messed up my self-worth. I didn't think I was worthy of the goodness of life. And um, I know going to Agape at a young age, I've been going, going to Agape since I was 10. Wow. Um, listening to you, investing in myself, reading a lot, um, praying a lot, creating a very intimate relationship with God helped me reaffirm who I am in God. Because mm. I was looking outside of myself for my self-worth and realizing <laughs> that, you know, all that is internal and that God has placed me on earth for a reason, big or small in whoever's eyes, but it's a purpose and a reason. And that gives me self-worth that I mean something to God. Yes, God that's powerful. Life. That's powerful. And the reason I'm, I, I appreciate what you're saying, because oftentimes people look at people such as yourself they see a modicum of success and they think that you're different. You think that you're special than other people, but they don't understand that you had demons too. Self-doubt, lack of self-worth. Uh, and then you, you, you tack on that. I mean, your, your childhood being, being uh, kind of sketchy in certain areas of your life. And then you tack on that, your beloved gets killed, you know, and you're, you're, you're left to raise your children, you know, by yourself. And I just wanted people to kind of get an understanding that that you walk through life just like everyone else. You know, there's tragedies, there's things that occurred in childhood, uh, there's, uh, you still have to keep going. So it wasn't like people are specially, uh, you know, anointed to be, to be special. You have to work at this. Yeah, I work on it every day. And every day, of course, I still like, how do I do this? You know what I mean? What? am I to do? How am I to do it? And instead of looking outside of myself, I just go within. And I think me, I'm 36 years old now. That's what I've learned on this healing journey is to go within and to create or to invest in my relationship with God. I love that. I love that. Invest in my relationship with God. Because you know what? The dividends <laughs> are remarkable you know, when you invest in your relationship with God. And so you're still a baby. You're 36. Am 36. I a baby? <laughs> you're a baby. I mean, you, you got, That's you raised me. I've lived through a lot of stuff. I know, I know you have a lot of experience. Yeah. In 36 years. I mean, yes. and you have two children. Yes. You know, and, and one's and, about to be in the sixth grade. So and I one's about like to be in the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. But you know, so, so three and six is nine. So you're at the end of a cycle in your life and you're about mm. to, you got to begin another cycle in your life. So two things I want to say. One, you don't have to ever mention your age again to anyone because, you know, you're a timeless being. And, mm -hmm. and people over the years have asked me my age. And I say, listen, I'm not interested in age. And age isn't interested in me. You know, <laughs> and I can remember Satchel Paige because he pitched in the major leagues for many years, well past what some people would say is an individual's prime. And they, they, they would say to him, you know, how old are you? And he would say, how old would you be if you didn't know how old you was? You know what I mean? Pick that age and stay with it because the mind will, will, will wrap itself around that. And then the other part is, you know, you're, you're, you're at the end of a cycle. So I want to ask you two questions. You know, one is, what would you say now to the, to the younger Lauren? 
you know, the lowering that, you know, self-doubting, uh, lack of self-esteem, you know, carrying the burden of events that occurred in your childhood. If you, if you could go back and talk to her, mm. what would you say to her now? Well, first I would tell her that her circumstances and conditions of what are around her is not her it's it's not a reflection of her and it's not her i no. think i took so much of the chaos around me and and took it as if like i deserved it and i made it my fault i internalized it and i would tell her that it, it's not her fault mm -hmm. and that um i think i would just encourage my younger self and remind her of how special she is to god and how big or small, however she wanted to show up on earth, that she's just meant to be here. Mm -hmm. Now that's powerful. Um, I think it's really important that people do know that, that whatever circumstances they're in or situations, to come to an understanding that it's, it's not somebody's fault. Ignorance is always to blame. It's always, mm -hmm. we don't personalize things. And so you would go back and you would tell young Lauren, it's not your fault. This, this circumstance doesn't define you. Yes. More, you're bigger than the circumstance. Absolutely. That's exactly what you said and much better than me. But no, <laughs> I would, yeah, because I think as children, as young adults, you internalize all the events and all the, you know, what the adults are doing around you, you, and that hurt you, you take it as like, what did I do? Is this happening? Cause I'm not, you know? So I think, yeah, I'm in alignment with what you said. Yeah. And well, I'm, I'm just reflecting back what you said. <laughs> <laughs> what you said is much better than me. <laughs> Young, ageless, timeless, Lauren. <laughs> mm, I receive. Now, um, as I said, you're, you're at the end of a cycle now, you know, th th three and six, it's a, it's a nine which is a, a, a cycle of completion in the beginning of a new cycle. What would you say you're heading into right now? What does is, what is your spirit say that you're, you're stepping into as the next vision and version of Lauren? I think I'm meeting myself much, really deeply. Like my relate, I, I used to think I had this like super clear relationship with the divine, but it wasn't until recently, until everything I went through and all my thoughts had to kind of unfold in a way. I think I'm stepping into a space of like real clarity. Like I really want to know God for real. Mm, mm. You know, I don't want it's... it to be a theory anymore. I want it to be like, yeah. And yeah. I, I want to carry that, you know, I, I, I would like to carry that. I would like to be of service in this phase of my life. I think, you know, in my previous years, I, I've been very into my ego. Mm -hmm. And I would like to be of service in this phase of my life. Yeah, that's beautiful because the ego, that's a slippery, slippery slope for a lot of artists and a lot of creators and a lot of people that are in front of the crowd. Their ego can get the best of them and they actually uh, can put on a superiority airs, think they're better than other people. You know, I, 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 it's, 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 a, it's a tough thing to navigate. Yeah. So for you to be able to, to, to have a moment of reflection and say, yeah, in, my, in my younger days, you know, the ego would get in there, but now I want to be in service to God. I mean, that, I think that's big. I really do. I, and I want to be intentional. Like, I, I want to be clear on what I'm doing, and I want to be very present where I'm at. Yeah. And I really appreciate a lot of the young artists that are coming up now. They don't uh, have any hesitation in using the G word. They don't have, yes. you know, they don't have any hesitation in saying, you know, I'm, I'm going to be connected with God and, yes. and, I, and, and everything that I do, I want it to be a reflection of God. Whereas in the past, that was kind of like, a, for some people, a sign of weakness, you know, and, and, and please, I want people to understand that we're talking about the presence of God. We're not talking about religion. Yeah. We're talking about religiosity. We're not talking about old school religion where there's a God that's going to condemn you to hell and. And, and, and call you a poor sinner and mm -hmm. you know we, we're not into that we're talking about the real god the, the presence that's All never love. an absolute yeah, presence the of love and of beauty and intelligence and so i love it when i see you and other artists 
you know, I had uh, my boy Amarian, you know, on, on the summit recently, and, and he has no hesitation either about, you know, he's here for the presence of God now in, mm -hmm. in this time of life. And there's a lot of artists that are coming forward that um, don't want to just be like a showpiece. They, they want to show up for God as well as do their art, their singing, their dancing, their acting, their cre whatever their creative urge is. So it, it gives me um, more than hope when, when people are stepping up like you and saying, you know what, I'm here for God, period. Yeah. All the way, because I know what it feels like when you have a plan in your mind for life and, life, and, and something else happens and all you have is God. Yeah, because in, in, and because of what you have grown through, not your childhood, plus the, the, the sudden death of your beloved, you know, there's a statement that I like to use uh, is that oftentimes religious people are trying not to go to hell, but spiritual people have already been there. You know? mm -hmm. they, they've gone through so much that now they are aware what heaven is. It's not just a place that you go to when you die. Yeah. Heaven is a state of consciousness. Yeah. You know, and so you, you have a lot of uh, heavenly moments, even though you've been through hell. Mm-hmm. Because of your love of God. Yeah, no, I've been through hell and back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so you, 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 you know the real God, not the God just in the book. <laughs> and, and I used to, you know, God, you, if I'm honest, God, you used to all be very, like, a theory for me until I had to really call on the divine, like, hold up, I'm losing my grip here, help. Yeah, so God became, not, God, now God for you is not just 911, God is also 411. <laughs> and I mean, literally, I, I'm wake, I have a morning routine and, I, and it used to just be an hour and I've had to you know, expand that hour to two because I need more time with just myself and God before I start today, the day because it's pure medicine for me. Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit. Talk about your, your spiritual practice. I think very important. Um, so I'm also a big, I, I read all kind of books. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm reading um, Love Without Conditions right now. Um, so I try to read at night for at least 20 minutes, but in the morning I wake up before the sun. Um, I make myself some tea. That's my son playing a video game. Sorry. <laughs> um, I make myself some tea and, um, I go into my little sacred space. I light my incense. I light, um, a candle that represents light. Um, and I meditate for 10 minutes because I'm a new meditator. So 10 minutes is where I'm at with it now. Um, I also, um, I write, I free write for 30 minutes to an hour. I just write out everything I feel. I don't have, there's no structure to it. It's just whatever. No filter. No filter either. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. just write it. And then I read, um, I read a prayer. I have a prayer book that has daily prayers. And so I read a passage from that. Um, I sit in silence. I come to myself. I set an intention for the day. And then, you know, that by that time it's seven, the kids are up and I, I'm present. Right. So you're, this, is, this is really beautiful because uh, oftentimes I say that uh, people aren't just suffering from an attention deficit disorder. They're suffering from an intention deficit. Mm. They just go out into their day and they end up reacting to circumstances. Yeah. But they've had no intention for the day at all. So they have no rudder. They have no vision and they have no rudder. And I know because I used to live life like that for years, for 35 years, 34 years. You know, that was how I lived life. And it wasn't until I started the practice that I was like, oh, my God, I had so much at hand that I could have applied that I just I just didn't know. Right, right. But you do now. I do now. That's why I talk about it a lot, so that hopefully somebody it can help someone. Right. So I know that you, you know, you, you've attended Agape. You and I have worked together. You work with my sister, Queen of Fua. Yes. <laughs> we, we had a good conversation uh, recently and talked about you and just really embracing your, your, your walk. And uh, so you, you, you keep good people around you as well. And I think that's another good um, quality that you have. You surround yourself with good people. 
Yeah, I and mean, that's a realization I just, you know, I was thinking I was in meditation the other day and I was thinking that people are either medicine or poison. Oh, speak on that. And so, um, <laughs> and, and sometimes th without any intention to be poison, but when you're around certain people and all they do is gossip or entertain themselves with, you know, a lower vibration and, you know, talking about people or, you know, negative comments and stuff like that that penetrates yeah oh and then when you're and so that's poison because then you carry that it doesn't feel good ever after long and then or if you're around someone that just talks about things that are uplifting fulfilling or just sitting in silence with someone that has really good energy that's medicine whether you are aware of it or not it brings you to like a peaceful state and so we just have to be really cautious and aware of like you know, and some of us can be poisoned sometimes to others so that we need to be aware of how we show up in others' lives as well. Absolutely. There's a statement, you know, people who talk about other people, that's mediocrity. People who talk about events, that's average. And t people who talk about vision and possibility, you know, that's excellence. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we want to stay away from the vibration of haters and gossipers and people who put people down. Because those individuals, they don't understand that they're actually using their word to experience the very thing that they're talking about. Because whatever comes out of your mouth is a, is a blessing or a curse, but ultimately you experience that blessing or that curse. For sure. You said something that it, it was years ago, early on in my spiritual ascension, when I was much younger, you said, what you give, you keep. Yes. And I literally, and I know this because I'm not perfect perfect and there's been so many times in my life that I've been caught in low vibrational conversation and the next day I feel it then right. I'm on some <laughs> because you're you know, because the, as we know now the cells of your body are listening to you mm -hmm. atoms in your body your organs are listening to you mm -hmm. your body chemistry is listening to you so whatever's coming out you're getting you're getting a dose of it so why not why not treat yourself good by treating others good even in your mind See, medicine or poison. You medicine, see, medicine, right? Medicine, poison. <laughs> I would just like to be medicine. I'm sure, you know, in my life, I, I'm sure I've been poisoned. Uh, moving forward, I would like to just stay on my medicine tip. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, I don't, I don't, I want to. I, I know you got things to do. I don't want to keep you all day, but I just, <laughs> but I could. <laughs> and I'm sure we're going to have further conversations down the line. For well, sure. As as we leave, what do you want people to know going forward? Are there any projects, anything you want people to know that you're about that uh, they can participate in or? Yeah, I just, um, I actually just dropped a, a collaboration on a sunglass collection with Diff Eyewear. Mm -hmm. And um, I, it's a charitable sunglass collection. So um, what does that mean? What does that mean? Charitable so Diff is a um, company that puts to the side some of the proceeds that they like the money that they get from each purchase and they give it to the, a charity. Okay. And so um, it was real intentional to work with them because I really like the idea of giving back in some way um, in all ways actually. And so I just dropped that collection yesterday and oh. I'm really excited about it because I love sunglasses and I will wear them 24 seven if I could. But they were uh, my design, and it was the first time that I designed sunglasses. And um, I just designed what I want to wear. And so I was real, like, genuine with it and kept it true. So where do they go to find this? On your on your Instagram or what? Yeah, the link is in my bio, and but um, diffiwear.com. And, they're, um, you know, we got good news yesterday that a lot of them were sold out. Oh, very good. Look at you. Yeah, I mean, it really, my. Uh, um, you're becoming. You're becoming a a, a hustler. <laughs> <laughs> well, I learned. I learned from the best. Uh, right. But you know, honestly, I just, I think, I'm. I'm just real grateful that I'm able to, um, create anything that anyone would respond to. You know what I mean? Like, right. I'm just a girl from LA at the end of the day, and so the fact that people think that what I think is cool is cool, I'm like. That's tight. So <laughs> right, right, right. I'm just humbled. Well, you know, thank you so much for stopping through and being a part of this week long, inviting people to embrace their sacred yes, yes. Uh, which you've done in the midst of calamity and in the midst of, of, of joy. 
and uh, oftentimes people don't see behind the scenes that you know you're a mother, you're raising you're raising kids, and you're embracing the next stage of your own evolution. It's not always easy, but as you've said, you you know you're leaning on the presence of God, the real God presence, and 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 knowing that you you're actually here as a representative of the presence. Yeah, and that's my intention yeah. for even this live. I'm like you know I don't want. I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be how I can just represent God and be a vessel. And I, before I go, I would like to say this, like a lot of my healing journey is inspired by my kids. I want them to see that when things happen in life that are traumatic and you know, you don't know if you'll be able to survive it, you will. And this is, this is how, and that's why I think, you know, just my kids see me in meditation. I don't hide any of it from them. Right. So hopefully it's a roadmap for them one day when life, you know, throws them a curveball or something that they feel they won't be able to survive. That they, right. you know, mom did this. She was, you know. So. Right, because your kids grow to the point where they won't do what you say, but they'll do what you do. You know that that's that's the real parenting, mm -hmm. uh, being the example, because they're not gonna they're not gonna listen to you at a certain point. They rebel but they eventually come back to what you do. Mm -hmm. I watched that with my own kids in terms of their, their eating habits, in terms of their meditation, in terms mm. of being a part of agape, in terms of being a part of a higher conversation. You know, they, they, they're becoming me, and they're, but not me, they're becoming them. Yeah. Right <laughs> I'm becoming my mom. I write everything down. I'm like, oh, yeah. God. <laughs> well, any last words? Thank you for inviting me to do this and giving me this opportunity. You are such a, you have been one of my master teachers and I sincerely, soulfully thank you. Well, God bless you, Lauren. It's been my joy. And we've had all the demographics and ages this week and you're a youngster. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for stepping up to the plate and thank you for giving us your time. Okay. As I say to all my guests, you know, one of the most valuable things that we have in life these days is time, you mm -hmm. know? And so when you can, give your time to something like this. I just, I just appreciate it. And I'll, I'll be talking to you soon. Yes, I love you so much, Rev. Thank you. I love, I love you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <Right> <laughs> Bye.